that as the storm rises, you're getting scared and fearful and worried. What did Jesus tell the disciples? Oh, ye of little faith. All he had to do was stand up and said, be calm. And the winds calmed. And the boat just sat there. All beautiful and nice and sweet. Quit trying to fight. Let His mercy do for you. Let His grace fall upon you. Let Him give you every gift He desires because that's what He wants to do. We are bound with Him. Do y'all realize that when He adopted us into His family, He has to provide for you. That's Jewish tradition. He's held by his own Jewish laws. Hey, I can take my child and give him away. Don't have to give him nothing. Send him out the door and say, I don't want you. Get away. Leave. But if I take on someone else's child, me and Crystal, Jesse's not my son, but in my heart he is. He has a father, but in my heart he is. And for me, and the Jewish tradition, I must provide for him. I have to leave him an inheritance. I cannot give him away. That's one of those great things about being adopted into God's mercy and grace. By his own words and law, he must provide for us. He has to. It's his own word. That's his mercy and in His grace. Let me give you a gift. Isaiah 64, you don't have to turn there. It just says, But now, O Lord, Thou art our Father. We are the clay, and Thou art the potter. We all are the work of Thine hands. I didn't make a very good bowl here. I mean, it's got flaws. I, I think you would hold a little bit of water, you know, but... I like the fact that it's not so perfect. Because yeah. if I'm a perfect, you're not going to help. That's right. I'm within myself if I think it's perfect. See, I need to have those little rough edges. I need to have those cracks. I need to have those splits. That way when God's filling my bowl up with mercy and grace, as He fills up mine, it spills out on other people. See, because you need to show mercy and grace. God gave you a gift, and you need to tell somebody else about it. And see, that's the mercy and grace that you can bestow upon somebody. By telling them, hey, have you known what God has done for me? Have you seen the good things He's done for me? Hey, last weekend, my, my, my hot water heater tried to catch on fire. But guess what? It didn't. His mercy showed up, and He gave me grace when I didn't deserve it, and He let us find it before it got out of hand. I tried to get out in the stove, but guess what? I had a flat tire. Couldn't get out. Guess what? I had a son that has a four-wheel drive pickup truck who could come get me and take me. Hey, mercy and grace walked in when I didn't deserve it. Amen. See, that's mercy. That's grace. When you don't deserve anything, God says, I'm going to give you everything. Man, that's pretty awesome, man. You don't deserve anything, but I'm going to give you everything. I'm the man with a cattle, thousand, with cattle on a thousand hills. Is that right, Miss Betty? Cattle on a thousand hills? Something like that. I'm sure it's, it's close enough that God will forgive me. Cattle on a thousand hills. He owns all of it. You know, I, I read an article that a guy says, I don't know where I know it was a thing or a reply to one of Crystal's Facebook page posts she put. I don't know why you got to bring God into all Say, hey, you're going to have to do this on your own. 
I'm not sending my son. I'm not doing for you what he, what you think I should do. You know, I, you're going to have to suffer it yourself. You're going to have to pay the penalty the way that my son is. I'm not going to let him do it. Aren't you glad that he let you pay, let him pay the penalty? Hey, I, I'll even go so far, and I'm not putting down the Jews, but guess what? I'm, I'm kind of thankful to the Jews that they did deny him. Because without their denial, I may not have this opportunity that I have today. I'm not saying that I, I want them to, to, to burn in hell. I don't want them to be there. No, I want them to be changed too. But without, without them denying him, we may not be able to receive his mercy and grace. We might be left in that lost and dying world that, that God said, I, I'm just not worried about it. I'm just taking care of my people, my chosen people. I'm glad. And I know it's harsh, but hey, I want the mercy. I want the grace. I want the everlasting covenant. I want to be grafted into Father Abraham's blessings that God promised him. And because the day I chose Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, guess what? I got grafted in. Every blessing that Abraham said, and God said he would get, you're going to get. Every one of them. Man, that's awesome. Romans 9, 23, 24. But indeed, O oh man... Who are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed say to him who formed it, Why have you made me like this? Does not the potter have power over the clay for the same lump to make it our vessel for honor and another for dishonor? What if God, wanting to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath prepared for destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had prepared beforehand for glory, even us whom he called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Did y'all hear what he said in there? He says, hey, there's some vessels that I've made that are turning to wrath. They're turning to anger. They're turning to hate. They're denying me in everything I've ever said. But he says, you know, even them I give much long suffering. Even them I don't just kill and destroy. But he says, hey, look at you. Look at this vessel of honor. I'm not destroying them. And if I'm not destroying them, man, imagine what I'll do for you, the ones who chase after me. The ones who follow me. The ones who allow everything that I have just to fall upon them and accept it. He says, I've got all the riches and glory. You, know, you don't have to do nothing. Love me. Keep my commandments. Tell everybody else about me. Man, those aren't hard things. Those aren't hard to do. you just walking out and praying before you eat. You're showing me everybody about God. The fact that you showed up to church, you're telling everybody about God. Because they see your vehicles out here. You, you live in Linville. I know there's people that pass here that knows, her, knows your car. And they're going, hey, Barbara's at church this morning. Mm -hmm. Wow. You just showed them God. Maybe that's the thing that draws them in and says, hey, I want to go see what Barbara's saying. I want to go hear what Barbara's hearing. I want to go be a part of what Barbara's a part of. Mercy and grace. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve grace. Everything in our life that we've ever done prior to accepting Jesus into our lives, we don't deserve that. Not in the least little bit do we serve grace. But God has different plans. And thank God, He has different plans. Yeah. His plans are not our plans. He says, I know the plans I have for you, not of destruction, but of love and goodness and mercy and kindness and protection. And even when this world comes against you and you think that you can't stand up, you think you can't walk, God says, I'm going to show you mercy. And I'm going to give you some mercy and grace. Hebrews 4 16 Most of us can quote this right off the top of our heads. 
but I'm going to read it because I want us to hear exactly Hebrews 4 and 16. Let us therefore come boldly. Okay, I want to stop there for a second. A lot of people think of boldly. When they think of boldly, they think of this just, just, just cocky little walk. Like, yeah, I deserve it. I'm coming in here. I'm bold. No, that's not what he means. Not in the least little bit. When he says come boldly unto the throne of grace, he says you come in with the expectation that I love you so much that I'm going to grant you mercy and grace. But don't you walk in here cocky. Don't you walk in here thinking I am going to give it to you, but you walk in with expectation. You walk in knowing that God's going to give you something good, but you don't walk in and say, I want something good. Give me something good. That's not the boldly he wants. He says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. When do you come to him? You come to him when you need. But guess what? You also need to come to him when you don't need. If things are going really super good in your life, that's a perfect time to go to him. Because you can say, God, I'm thanking you right now for all the mercy and grace that you're letting me have. Just continue to pour it out on me, Father. Let me have all that mercy and grace that I don't deserve, that I, I, but I desire it, Lord, because I need it. I want that mercy and grace. Thank you for all the good that's going on in my life. So you need to come to him then. But it says in the time of need. Hey, when you're down and out and the world is kicking you around, come to him then too. Praise me in the good. Praise me in the bad. We were laughing. When the, when the hot water here, we saw it, it was, it was catching on fire. It was still trying to burn out the side already. Hey, Lord, we counted all joy that you allowed us to go through this this morning at 4 a.m. Because, God, we know that it could have been worse than it is. See, I received mercy and grace in my time of need. See, we couldn't find it. We didn't know where it was coming from. So Crystal says, Lord, just show it to me. Show it to me, Lord. Show me where this burnt smell is coming from. I'm searching in the roof. I'm looking outside to see if it's burning through. I'm looking around the house to see if there's anything else, anywhere else it could be burning from. And God says, Crystal, I'm giving you mercy and grace right now. Look at your water here. And she saw the black on Joseph. It's in here. In our time of need, God showed us mercy and grace. He showed it to us. Well, for me, hey, the wires were cut. There's no chance of this thing catching on fire. Yeah, that smell was there. It was a horrible, nasty smell. But the, the house was saved. We were protected. I had uh, a piece of that we found. It's done. Hey, I laid back down. I was okay. Lord done took care of it. It was fine. It was in his hands. I laid back down. Crystal, I can't get the smell out of it. I can't go to sleep. I have to stay awake. Well, Crystal, I'm going to lay down. You keep an eye on things. I pray. I stay and pray, thank the Lord. I guess that's the difference between men and women. You know, for me, He done took care of it. He done showed His mercy to me. He done give me His grace by allowing us to find it and it not be you know, burning and burn the house down. He allowed us to show His mercy that we were at that house that night to be able to find it and not be home or gone somewhere and our house burned down and everything that we own. See, mercy and grace walked in. It showed itself fruitful right then and there. See, he says, I love you. You're following after me. You have a relationship with me. Amen. I want to give you the gift that you didn't earn. Gift of life. Gift of mercy. Gift of protection. I had peace. That's the one thing about mercy and grace. When you truly understand what mercy and grace can do for you, you'll have peace. Because there's nothing to worry about. Why be worried? God's got it in control. Will bad things happen in your life? Sure, but guess what? I've got peace because I've got mercy and grace to take care of it. 
Will this world call you a hater? Yes. Will this world call you a liar? Yes. Will this world try to destroy you? Yes. But guess what? I got peace. Amen. Because mercy and grace have been given to me. So why do I worry about it? Doesn't the Bible say worry not for the things of tomorrow? For tomorrow is sufficient for itself. Do you add anything to your life by worry? No, but you sure take time away from it. So why do we worry? Why do we not have peace every day in our lives? Because we let the devil come in and say, Oh, oh look what they did to you. Oh, look, look how these people are treating you. Oh, you know, they, they, these people over here just they listen to them talk about you. I don't care. I don't care. We had a gentleman tell us that you know, there's a, a young girl that, that's talking about us and goes and made this statement. Oh, Joseph is such a goody two shoes. But do you know what he did in his past? Do you know what he's done? And right now he's such a goody two shoes. I looked at the guy and I said, So? Well, at least if she's talking about me, she's letting somebody else alone. I had peace about it. I don't care because what God had forgiven me of, He don't remember. He gave me mercy and grace, and the gift He gave me of grace that says, I forgot it. I've thrown it into the sea of forgiveness. It will never be used against you by me. But Satan, he has his little things over here. And he tries to poke at you. He tries to prod at you. Anything that's ever brought into your memory that hurts you, that harms you, it ain't God. It ain't God in any sense of the word. It's nothing but that pure devil trying to take away your mercy and your grace. See, he doesn't have mercy and grace anymore. He had it. And he gave it away. He says, I don't want it. He says, I want everything that you got. I don't want just your mercy and grace. He says, I want your worship. And God said, well, my mercy and grace are no longer yours. And he kicked him out. Mercy and grace. They'll always be together. Never separated. You'll never, ever in your life receive nothing but grace. And you'll never ever in your life receive nothing but mercy. You get them both. One always comes before the other. But you always get them both. Amen. And aren't you glad? Amen. Aren't you glad that He just doesn't just give us grace? Yes. Aren't you glad that He doesn't just give us mercy? Hey, mercy in and of itself is awesome. You know, I mean, hey, the judge could throw me in jail, but he didn't. Man, mercy was wonderful. And that, that could have sufficed us, but he says, no. No, no, no. He says, that's not enough. I, 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 want, I want to give you more. I, I want to bless you more. I want to show you more love. Man, can you imagine if we acted like God? Can you imagine that? How different this world would be? When you see a man out on the street that's hungry, has no way to get any food whatsoever, but you take some of your food and give it to him? Yeah. Show him mercy. He didn't, he didn't, didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve for you to give him any food. He ain't done anything to, to work his way to give you food, but you gave it to him anyhow because you love God's people. And then you went one step further and you showed him grace. You gave him the gift of and said, here, brother, eat. Be made whole. But while you're at it, I'm feeding your body. Let me feed your soul a little bit here. Let me tell you about the mercy and grace that I received that I'm now bestowing upon you. See, it's a gift we need to give away. This is the one time that re-gifting is a good thing. It's an okay thing. Because guess what? The gift that you're giving away, that you're re-gifting, it's a gift that everybody Everybody loves it. Everybody wants it. Even those who who say that, you know, there's and there's many multiple ways that I can get to Christ. 